Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to some more Gwent, the Witcher card game. Today we're going to be going through my first homemade deck and pointing out some of the reasons that I've included what I have and some of the cards I've chosen. After that, you can then laugh at me and go down in the comments down below and tell me what I should be picking instead. Now, this has been not net decked at all, so it probably isn't a very good deck, but I'm quite proud of it and the way it's been playing in casual so far is quite good. Without any further ado, let's get into it. As you can see, I'm currently running a Skyrtail Dwarves deck. Now, I've chosen to go with Bruva Hoog, mainly because of his synergy with some of the Dwarves. I know Francesca, after a recent patch, is uh, really, really powerful and probably too strong, in fact. But Bruva Hoog synergizes well with a lot of the cards I've chosen to include. So there you go. Maybe that's the first change you've made to this deck. Going into the golds, we start off with a Zoltan Chive. Now this guy, he works really, really well with a lot of what this deck tries to do. We have resilient dwarfs on board. Now the idea is to play them, buff them, win the round, keep them, win the round. There you go. Simple enough. You win two rounds in a row because your dwarfs stay on the board over turns. We've got a few dwarves to do this, which we'll get into in a little bit. But the way resilience works in the most recent patch is they have to be strengthened, not boosted. As soon as they're boosted, the resilience kicks in and they go back down to their base power. So the fact that he strengthens is really, really good. The other thing this guy does, he can move your opponent's cards into better positions for, say, the Machacompiric Technicians. Um, excuse the pronunciation of that. It's quite a long one. Um, but yeah, they can be really, really good, but sometimes they need a little bit setting up. And he also damages enemies, so if you have a problematic card, which is two or less power, you can just move it, and voila, is dead. So that guy is actually really good. He's also dwarf, which is obviously the point of this deck. The second guy we're going to come to is Say Synthesis. Now this guy, he's not ideal, he's not amazing, but he has won me games on his own. It take, all it takes is for your opponent to be trying to stack their board as well. You run out of clear. You have to just stack yours. And then this guy can easily become a 20 strength guy. And it just, there you go, you've won. That's the idea of, say, synthesis. Now, I could have chose to put some elves in here. So I could then do damage to their board as well. But I feel like the dwarves just work so much better without the elves involved. The other two goals I've chosen are mainly just filler cards, to be honest. I've... Uh, I've experimented with Triss Merigold and Geralt himself, but I found that Yennefer Condra and Geralt Igni or Gigni seem to do a better job in this deck. Now, I don't know if that's going to change, if even Gigni's that good. He's only been situationally good for me. So I'm more than happy to change a few cards there, but I just can't seem to find a single gold that I think this really needs to be in the deck. So that's what I've gone with for the golds. The silvers, we start off with uh, Barkley card, as I like to call him. This guy is really, really good because he can pull certain cards which need to be strengthened, like I was saying earlier. He could pull your Mahakam Air Defenders or even Yarp and Zigrin, which we'll come to in a second. He also strengthens them. You're playing two dwarves on a turn. It's just, he's a good card overall. Shame about his two strength, but we'll get over that. The second silver we're going to come to is Yarp and Zigrin. Now this guy, really strong to start off with. Whenever a dwarf ally is played, boost off by one. This deck's just full of dwarves. Therefore, he can get very big. <laughs> and he's also resilient. So, that's always a positive, I guess. He would help with your back on guards to stay on the board and win you two consecutive rounds in a row. That's what consecutive means, Ryan. The next silver we're going to come to is going to be Dennis Cranmer. Now, this guy is probably the MVP of the deck. He boosts all dwarves, regardless of where they are, by one. Now... With Bruva Hoog's hero power, whatever you call it in this game, you can literally play Bruva Hoog into Dennis Cranmer first turn every time. There's nothing going to stop you doing that unless you've got him in your hand. So what I'm saying is it's impossible to not start with him where his power level is the highest. The other, One of the other silver cards combos really, really well with Dennis Cranmer. That's Decoy. You can actually just bounce him twice and then everything in your deck, aside from maybe, say, Synthesis... Yenkonj and Gigni are too stronger. Now that could be actually have a devastating effect on the game overall. One of the other silvers I have is Cleaver. Now this guy I believe is a starter silver. 
but he's good. He does a job. He's high strength and he's a dwarf. Like, what more can I ask for, really? And the final silver in this deck is really, really much a filler. I have, I think I've used it in maybe one game, but again, I don't know what to add to it. I don't think in my head that I want to make a card that might be absolutely awful. So maybe you could help me out with how to replace Scorch. It can be a good card, but most of the time you can either get rid of the opponent's cards yourself with a few of the other bronzes, or your cards are the highest, so you do not want to be Scorching in any way, shape or form. And that brings us nicely on to the bronzes. Now we start off with the Mahakam Defenders because these guys are the MVPs of the deck. These guys are your main part of your win condition. You want to be stacking these guys, making them really strong, keeping them resilient. Then you go over to the next turn and voila, you've won 2-0. Or if you've lost first round, you've won 2-1. It's very, very rare that I get 2 0 I think I've been 2 one maybe twice and won 15 games. So that's, that's basically how this deck's gone with for me so far. The other bronzes, we have Mahakam Guards, which combo really well with them. They obviously strengthen the Dwarves by 3. Sure, you might want to boost an ally by 4 if it's the last round. So, say Synthesis, Geralt Igni, Yennefer Conjurer. They all will get buffed by 4, so you've got an extra point there if you really need it. But the other thing that you can be used for are the Mahakam Marauders. Now, these guys are quite strong to start off with, and they're good for a few reasons. Now, you can move them with... Um, Zoltan Chive and they get boosted by two from him and then two from themselves so that's a four point boost they get boosted by three from Mahakam Guards and then two from themselves again they're also immune to weather essentially without the weather being buffed obviously because they could just sit there they take two damage but guess what because they've been damaged or they've been weakened they get boosted by two it's absolutely fine so these guys are actually becoming really good cards for me I started off this deck with only one of them Soon realised they were really, really good and changed that to two. Another one of the cards that I really, really love in this deck is the Mahakam Pyrotechnician, which is quite a mouthful. This guy is pretty much a 14-point swing if you play it at the right time. Um, at worst, he can be he gives you five points. Probably don't play it when they haven't got any um, units on their side because what's the point? But he can also clear problematic cards. They have cards that maybe need armor so for northern realms armor decks you can just take take the armor off them and guess what they're rendered next to useless then um, there's a lot of uses to these guys and they just do a lot of damage now most of the time i'll be playing them on um, a 15 point swing with dennis Kramer making them six power hitting each thing for three there you go there's 15 points every time maybe even 16 points if you've dennis Kramer twice so overall they're pretty good cards and I really enjoyed them in this deck for sure. And the final bronzes, well, the final actual units are the Dwarven Skirmishers. Now, these guys, they're not amazing. I started off with three of these in the deck, and that's what got cut for a Marauder. But I find them pretty good. I mean, they're, they're an 11 point swing, and they can take out problematic cards, but mainly they're just used as a Dwarven synergy. I mean, with Dennis Kramer buffing them, uh, with them buffing Yap and Zigrin and, say, Synthesis. They just turn into quite good cards. Um, they're not amazing, but they're good. And the final bronze I have in this deck is probably one of the most important to have currently, for me at least, is First Light. Everyone and their mum is playing Monster's Weather. Now, to deal with Monster's Weather, First Light. It's it's basically the best counter um, going for at least a Skyrtel deck. At least in my opinion. Aside from that, you're not playing against Weather. You can just use it for Rally, which is going to pull out one of your... Dwarves that you actually want on board, so they're not a bad card in any way, shape, or form. Overall, this deck performs really, really well. Even when my resilient dwarves are being locked, or do you know what I mean? Like they're getting taken out of the game, I still find ways to win. And that's what's wonderful about especially the Marauders and the Pyrotechnicians, they do work. <laughs> and then say synthesis on top of that, and guess what? You've got a party. Now we're going to go into a game. I'm going to maybe record a couple of games just so I don't get an AFK like I have been recently. And hopefully we can showcase the deck quite well. And then maybe based on that, you can make your decisions on what you'd replace. So let's get straight into it. Here we go. So surprise, surprise. We're against probably Weathers. Weathers? Weather monsters. So we want to keep this first light. We also probably want to keep the Mac and Pyro Technician. Gonna do work. Scorch can go. It's gonna be a crop card for me. 
the, I feel like I want to bait out as much as I can from this him first round and then try and win 2-3. Hopefully bait out all his weather. Now, Dorm Skirmisher can stay for now. We've got the Mahakam Defenders. Dennis Cramer in hand. Gigney. I don't really want you, to be honest. I don't really want Yen Kanji either, to be brutally honest. But I might just keep her because she could bait out some weather. If she's really annoying him that much, she'll be taken care of, I'd imagine. So I could put her on middle row. Because basically none of my units are middle row. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. That's where we're going to end. And it's our turn to start off with. So, I feel like Dennis Cranmer is probably the best bet. Um, I mean, I could play Yap and Ziggurum first, but he's just going to get annihilated by weather. Oh... Uh, Decisions, decisions. We could also play Mahakam Marauder in the middle row. Yeah, we're going to do this first. I hope. I hope. Again, look, I'm trying to bait out his weather here. So I'm, I want to use the less important cards. Obviously, these are good, but weather doesn't affect them. But so far, <laughs> no one I've played That's has realised this. Day. Wow. The Geralt opening. Okay, we're going to whack down a Yen Conj next to him. You best yield now. Hmm. What are you going to do, boy? So basically, if he um, if he doesn't play, if he plays weather, it's quite good, in my opinion. Yen Conj is going to get hit by it, but it's fine. No big loss. We're not going to be clearing weather yet. I want to try and make him use it all first. So that's why I'm trying to bait out two, at least two of his um, weather with the first round. And I'm happy to lose it. And then we know then we can clear it second round. I have never seen Octavist in my life. So damage all enemies by one. Return it to your hand and transform it into Exhausted Octavist. What does that do? Oh, nothing. It's actually a pretty crap card. Nice. Okay, at this point, I feel like I want to play Yap and Zigrin. Yes, oh, I might just go for the 2 0. The There's the weather we're expecting. Let's play Dennis Cranmer. And everyone gets a buff. You get a buff. Yen Conj is gonna die. Um, I don't think there's any ways, two ways about that. There we go. Here's some weather. Why are you not doing it to my resilient one? What's wrong with you? Never had your to make it so Yen Conj does more, does more work. Unless, oh, there we go. But then Trent and Murph. After three turns, at the start of your turn, destroy all of the highest units on the board. Ooh, shite. That could be hit. That could definitely be mine. Cool. Currently, it's Mako Marauder who's only getting bigger. I know he's not. He's not taking any damage yet. He will only get bigger as soon as Yen Conj dies. So, I might just pass. Because then we get card advantage. We're ahead by quite a bit. And if he doesn't kill Yap and Zigrin. I'm actually fine with that. Well done. You just made the Marauder even bigger. Is he just going to give me the first round? Whilst using some of his weather? He is. Hmm. So... He has card advantage now. Because he has an extra card in his hand. These pyrotechnicians are wonderful. So I think this time I'm just going to go straight out with the Mackham defenders. I kind of want to keep the guard just in case. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. That's fine by me. Because we can pull out Barkley, Barkley card here with this guy. So let's drop him middle row. Just to spread it out a bit. And then where's Barkley card? 
Mahakam. And then he's pulled out a magical Mahakam. guard. Nice. So let's buff Brewer Who. I don't want to make Yap and Zigrin too big. I mean, we kind of just did, but it's fine. What are you going to use Dagon for, Brew? Biting Frost. That's going to hurt a little bit, isn't it? Right, this bait out is another one of his weathers. Um, I highly doubt he won't use it here. And these guys are going to get big, so he should. What the hell is that? Imlarith. Oh, okay. Okay, fair, fair. Um, how about we have another defender? What are your thoughts on that? And all the while, this guy's only taking one damage a turn because I'm playing dwarves. Place them on your back row. Oh, beautiful. The value out of the pyrotechnicians. Oh, this is just wonderful. Oh, get wrecked. We got another one on the way as well. I mean, it's going to be less value, but... Oh, no, it won't. Not anymore. <laughs> what a guy. Okay. Okay. No, don't clear him. Oh, balls. I mean, hopefully I can just tempo him out here. We have a massive points lead, so... Any weather? Uh, that is an exhausted Octavist. Nice. I'm going to drop this down and boost... So if we strengthen this, he becomes level just in case of Scorch. This guy is probably the best bet then. Where's your weather, bro? Ice Giant, nice. I mean, we just got more value, so thank you for that. Is he not going to play any weather? Has he not got any weather? No. I'm going to just rally. Um, Mega Marauder might as well just drop in the... I don't know. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be a 2-0. Unless he pulls something magic out of his ass. Is futile. Nice. And what are you going to do next turn? Bru, you've got 24 points to make up. I don't know what card that was. But you're now choosing between two cards and you're going to lacerate for 12, which is nowhere near enough. Sorry, Brew. Easy to know. So basically, that's the deck. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the most challenging game in the world to play. But we won and I'm not going to put a loss on YouTube. So that's wonderful. I want to know what you guys think of that deck. What, what I played was right, what I played was wrong. If I should have made different choices along the way. What cards I weren't looking out for. Something like that. I want to know how to get better at the game. Obviously, you get better by playing, but I mean, I won, so that's why it's a positive. We're all bad once upon a time, so don't be too mean. <laughs> if you missed yesterday's episode, we still need a definitive answer for what card to craft in premium and force into a deck in a couple of episodes time. So go back there, comment below what your favorite card is or what meme card you want me to create, and we'll see what meme monsters we can, we can make. As always, I want to wrap this episode up with a question. What MMR or rank did you guys finish at last season? And was that better or worse or as good as you expected? Were you disappointed or were you happy? That's basically, I want to get to know how good you guys are. If I'm taking your advice, I want to be sure that you're good. No, I'm just kidding. But it is something interesting to know. Thank you ever so much for watching and I hope to see you all around. See you later.